hello Sarah Payne here now I wanted to show you how to do a gorgeous little English paper pieced Christmas decoration I really love EPP I think it's great fun to do it's time consuming but in a slow stitchy way so it's the kind of thing I like to take on holiday with me or do in front of the TV you know curled up on the sofa with the cats you know it's that kind of project and here we go this is the decoration that we're going to be making so this is the English paper piece with pentagons. You see it's double sided with a bauble in the middle, just hanging down. Great fun. Doesn't use very much fabric at all. So you can make it, you know, with just scraps and bits and pieces, what you've got left over. Um, and there we are. It's a charming little thing to put on your tree or to hang in the window or something like this. So uh, let's take a moment and we'll see how to make it. OK, so we're going to work on our English paper piece Christmas decorations. And as you can see, the wreath, it doesn't use particularly big pieces. So we can use up a lot of our scraps of Christmas fabric that you have lying around. You see, I've got these little bits here. Some I've got more than others. You could do perhaps the whole decoration in one if you've got enough or intersperse it with other uh fabrics that you've got lying around you just if you're doing different fabrics you do want a bit of contrast so I mean these would contrast beautifully and so would these so um, it's really up to you you can introduce all sorts of colors because let's face it Christmas is all about the bling um, a needle and thread we're going to be hand sewing this so this is the thread that I'm going to be using it is a light weight thread it is um, it's a hundred weight which means it's very delicate the joy of using this for English paper piecing is it's so fine that it virtually disappears into your um, your stitching so that your stitches don't show so much uh, I've got some needles these ones are betweens um, they're, they're long enough to get a good grip on but they're not too wide for going through the fabric um, I have two pairs of scissors here one pair these are my paper scissors so these are for cutting the templates out and these are my fabric scissors so these are the ones that I'm going to be using for cutting my fabric pieces but avoiding the paper um, then we have the paper template now these are pentagons and there are 20 on the template sheet you need 10 for each side so for each decoration you make you are going to need one set of papers like this now you leave the papers in so uh, you won't be able to reuse these templates so bear that in mind just print out extra sheets for the extras that you want to do and then finally we have a glue pen now this is a fabric glue pen uh, that I'm really fond of um, I use it a lot for EPP and it is especially good when you want to remove the papers but actually we're not going to be removing the paper so if you don't have a fabric glue pen then you could just use a normal glue stick um, you just with it with a fabric um, a fabric glue pen like this you know it's not going to discolor the fabric so do check with whatever it, with whatever glue you're using that it doesn't mark your fabric at all this one is pink but it will dry clear okay so that's going to be quite useful for us so that's our supplies for this particular project so let's get started so I have my paper templates here and I'm just going to cut out one row's worth now I am using my paper scissors as I said because I don't want to blunt my fabric scissors and I'm just going to cut around these so cut on the line try to be accurate so there's one and actually to do it quicker you can do it like this this is what I tend to do Uh, obviously if you've got a die cutting machine you can do this with a die cutting machine or um, an electronic cutting machine you'll be able to do that with it too so I'm just going to chop off so that goes in that pile that one goes in that pile that's the waste pile that's to use pile that's waste pile and my use pile so this lot will go straight in the bin or in the recycling uh, you can cut out the rest of them if you want to it's up to you 
So now let's prepare our fabric. So I'm using two fabrics on the front of my wreath. I've got this lovely grey here with a little pattern on it and then I've got this red so I've got a nice contrast. So for the front of my wreath I need five of each. So but I'm going to get started. I tend to prepare a few at a time, sew them and then prepare a few more. So the first thing I want to do is put a little dot of the fabric onto my paper. Like that. And then I'm going to trim with my fabric scissors now to about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way around there we go and now i'm going to get my glue pen and i want the sharp edge and you can see when i put it on here i'm keeping it away from that fabric from the fold all right because i don't want to get glue along here it will just make it harder to sew through so i'm going to bring that along like that and i'm folding over up to the edge of the paper. If you struggle with the paper because your paper is quite thin, then you could actually print this out onto thicker card. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to wrap that fabric around my template and come out with the same size and shape for that template. There we go. So for each for each, as I said, each side I'll need two of the grey. And again, you can prepare all of these ahead of time. So I'll need five of the grey and I'll need five of the red. And then whatever I'm doing on the other side. We'll just do two for now. So there you go. There's, And you can actually get a bit of speed up. But make sure that you are tucking nice and tight to that fabric edge. You don't need much glue. This glue is sort of the texture of lipstick. All right, so don't press too hard. There we go, there's the next one. You could fussy cut this if you wanted to. So now I'll just do two of the red as well and we can get started. So you could actually place them so that you get the best use out of your fabric, but remember, you need to have a seam allowance between each one. So let's just... And we can be quite rough and ready with this. All right. So... And if you find you've not got quite enough fabric to leave a quarter of an inch, you can get away with a smaller seam allowance. All right, so I get my... Glue pen again, not too close to that edge because I don't want to make the fabric any thicker than it needs to be. There we go, fold that over and continue creating these until you have a little pile and then we're ready to start sewing them together. Now, I like to sew them together in pairs, um, but it's up to you. So what I do is I sew them into pairs and then I sew all those pairs together to create my wreath. Right, so here we go. That's my first set done and we're ready to sew. Now I'm ready to start sewing these pieces together. I've threaded my needle. Um, I've probably got about 20 inches of thread in total. You don't want it to be too long because you don't want to get tangled up. And I've tied a knot in one end. And I'm just going to trim quite close to that knot. All right, so I'm going to take two of my pieces and I'm going to put them right sides together. And the first thing I want to do is bury that knot in the seam allowance. OK, where we folded that over so that we're nice and secure. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sew along this edge and we're actually going to sew through the, the fold of the fabric. So that's where you want to make sure you didn't get any glue because that will make it harder to get your needle through. So what we're going to do is very close to the end, just stitch with the barest, picking up just the, the very edge 
of that fold, the very top edge of the fold. Pull that tight and your stitch needs to go perpendicular. So your stitch is always going at right angles to your fabric. If you go on a diagonal like that, you'll find there's more thread to actually show when you finished. So the next thing I'm going to do is go a bit further down and I'm going to go straight. So you can always see the needle is either coming towards me or going through away from me straight. It is not on an angle. And I'm going to do a stitch probably every sixteenth of an inch all the way across just picking up that barest fold as I go and then if you want to about halfway across I find this great for securing about halfway across go you see the thread came out that side I've gone back in the opposite wrap my thread around the needle and then pull and that's going to give us a nice tight bit in that center piece there so that it's not going to pull apart because that's what can happen with um, hand stitching is they the stitches can pull apart. So now I'm going to do it all the way to the other end each time just picking up because the more fabric you pick up as you travel across um, the more likely you are to be able to see that stitch. So continue all the way along and then at the end again I'm going to pop my needle back through the same hole wrap around with the thread around my needle pull that tight and then cut my thread I'm going to cut it and leave it a little bit long because then it's easier to tuck inside but now when we open that up we should not be able to see your stitches in between there so we're going to continue. So my next pair, I'll be taking and sewing together like this. And then you can see as I continue round, we actually start to create that wreath shape that you're going to see on your finished decoration. So continue preparing your pentagon shapes, um, cover them with your fabric. Uh, with the quarter of an inch seam allowance there sew them together until you have a full wreath shape it's 10 on each side and you will need two sides one for the front and one for the back you could actually cheat a little bit and do the back in felt so cut once you've done this cut around this onto your felt and just sew it onto a felt backing but I think on a Christmas tree especially it's nice to have something equally beautiful for the front and the back um, and because then it can turn on the tree and it looks amazing from any angle so I'm going to go off now and sew a few more of these together and then show you how to construct your ring. So here we are. We're at the stage where I've completed the front of my wreath and I also made a back for it as well. And here I did fussy cut those little tree pieces out of it in green, which is rather lovely. And then we take our two wreaths and we put them with the paper sides together. You can just see in there. We've got all those paper templates in there. You're leaving the paper in because it gives it structure. Um, and then you're going to sew all the way around the top and all the way around the inside. Now, um, when I started, if I just open that up a little bit, you can see in there is the end of my piece of ribbon for hanging. This is actually off a bauble. Um, and I'm going to be adding this bauble, which is from the same pack um, I'm going to have that hanging in the center here so it's all going to match nicely but um, you want to start with the top and sew all the way around the top edges and now I'm actually to the point where I'm going to I'm sewing the bottom edges as well and I'm using the same stitch as I did for these individual pieces but I don't want my travel stitches to th show so previously we were going backwards and forwards like that and the travel stitch was just sitting on the on the edge but now what we're going to be doing is I'm going to travel along inside it so it's technically a ladder stitch so you see I'm going into the fold of my fabric and then I'm going back into the fold of the other piece of fabric on the other side 
and I'm still going straight but this piece is coming along in the edge here and then just to keep everything nice and tidy when I get to the end of each of my pentagrams or pentagons um, I'm doing that stop where I wrap the thread around and then pull it tight there we go and I'm going to do the same in this next piece so I start each and every pair lined up brilliantly and they're not going to move. If you find any threads are hanging loose or poking out, just tuck them in at this point. Get my thread, wrap that around, pull it tight. And then I'm going to travel again along the inside of the fold, straight across onto the back through the fold, straight across forwards and continue all the way around. So I'm nearly at the point where I want to place my bauble. So just a few more stitches and we'll be positioning that bauble so that it hangs down nicely inside the centre of my wreath. You don't have to do this. You could actually, um, I've unthreaded my needle there, you could, if you like, make another um, pentagon and hang that in the middle with some beads on it or something like that. Make make the design your own. Um, you could also use fabrics that mean things for you. So perhaps you have um, made somebody a Christmas quilt and you're using the fabrics from the Christmas quilt to make matching decorations as well. The joy of using English paper piecing is that because you leave you, you using papers you don't have to have lots of complicated, you don't have to have special rulers or anything else to do this. You just print out the template sheet and you can print it out as many times as you need to um, because you'll need, as I said, one sheet per piece. Um, but also the papers inside give it stiffness. So you're not going to need to add wadding or anything else. So I'm just getting to this point now where I want to put my bauble in there. So what I'm going to do is I've got my bauble. Oh, oh dear. Oh no, that's all right. <laughs> it's meant to pop off. So I've got my bauble and I have secured my cord around it. Now I'm going to make a knot a little bit further down because um, the knot, putting big knots in it, is going to stop it sliding out of the inside of my bulb uh, of the inside of my wreath because obviously I don't want it too long but it'll help secure it if there's a big knot inside because I can stitch up to that knot all right so let's work out where I want my bigger knot to be yes about there I think so if I do another one just to be sure I don't want anything to move around. You could as well put a dab of glue on it if you want to, just to keep everything nice and secure inside, especially when you're trying to sew it. Okay, so let's grab my fabric glue. I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to open this up and I'm going to put a big splodge because this is only temporary, but I only need it to hold temporarily. So I'll put a big splodge of that inside and then I'm going to push that in and I can feel that knot in my fingers. I want to separate, move it over a little bit so that it's nice and centred. Hold it with my thumb. Get my needle and thread. I've just unthreaded again. You do want to, um, you might want to grab a needle threader for this because it is a tiny lightweight thread that we're using so that it's not visible but that makes it a little tricky to sew actually as this comes off I'm going to take that off and put it out of the way now it's quite handy it just means that I can get right in there let's tuck that knot in inside again hold that in place and then I'm going to sew up to it and do a few stitches as close as I can get now this cord um, let's have a go this cord I can actually sew into which is going to be quite useful to keep it secured it depends on how your um, 
cord is constructed but this is just going to give it a little bit more anchoring there we go stitch and now I'm going to go back to my ladder stitch so now I've secured that piece there and I'm going to continue with the ladder stitch This is why it's useful if you can remove the ball that remove the bauble so that things don't get too tangled up. But you are hand stitching, so that's alright. You can take it at whatever speed you like. And then we'll continue on and just sew to the end. And there we go, that's my wreath completed. Now, when you want to finish off a thread, it's a good idea to just take it inside your project, just like that. And pull it out because that's going to secure that end. And then we can get in with our scissors and cut that thread off. And now I can put my bauble back on. And there we go, we've got our lovely completed Christmas decoration. Ready to hang on your tree and enjoy.